all day it changed in a in a very very tremendous way like can you imagine uh growing up in a tent and only 30 years after you are in a in a house running water electricity chatting and they in the internet and sending emails it's like 30 years that we went through a, a drastic change as a community from our semi nomads uh living in the tent uh grazing uh farming and all of a sudden like moving from our way of life to a new way of life that was imposed by by the government of israel uh confiscate, confiscating the land and and the lifestyle of the bedouin community and forcing them to settle into townships the whole the whole process was made in a very patronizing way i would say only after in the last 20 years that the 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 situation is really becoming you know people are more willing to you know go further and go to universities and uh, allow the girls to study at at the university but it's still i would say we are still in this very um n- not balanced uh transition uh even now when you look at the bedouin community community violence is taking place in every single day and i feel i call this the swing uh phenomena the syndrome that you in the one side you f- have all this positive um uh facts about the bedouin community like hundreds of doctors at soroka hospital and female nurses and all these achievements and in the other hand you have all this violence and polygamy and the negative so it in in this you know swing there is extremist in phenomena in both in both sides it will take sometimes until this settle down it will take 20 years to settle it's part of the process so i'm i'm hopeful but this time we need a lot of interventions to help minimize the the risk my grandmother n- always would say ahna al-falastini we are the palestinians and uh and my father was born during the military regime so he was really afraid to talk about his palestinian identity so uh my my grandmother speaks about her identity my father never mentioned his palestinian identity and he would say only israeli and this was because of fear and at that time it was really uh you know you cannot speak about your palestinian identity you cannot raise the palestinian flag that's like the 60s and the 70s and uh, and the 80s and uh, and my father was so afraid to to speak about this so i got this mostly from my grandmother so i remember one of my jewish friends ask me the same question about my Palestinian identity and about my Bedouin identity and how the formation of identity and the dynamic of identity and i said you know my grandmother very clearly she would say i am a Palestinian my father would say i am an Israeli and i am i would say i am a Palestinian Israeli so for me this is the way i want to i want to be able to talk about my identity in a way that my identity is a mix of different identities 